Hi, I'm Alex from NME, and today we're with the stars of Mythic Quest, Rob McElhenney and Charlotte Nick Dare. How are, how are we guys? Alex, Great, I'm so happy you? that you pronounced my name correctly. Like, that was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. What, do you. what do you normally get? Micka, Mickle, Mickle, and by the way, I recognize that my name is a nightmare. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a car accident. But if you just look it up, I think it's out there at this point. <laughs> it is also, I do think it's pronounced phonetically. I mean, it's spelt phonetically. Yeah, but people, people don't realize the, the A in between the M and the C. Oh, yes. How do you think my name is spelled? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring you back to the show for a minute, guys. I know we could talk about names all day. But um, <laughs> in season two, all the characters' relationships have evolved a bit. Um, can you tell me a bit about Poppy and Iron's journey through these new episodes? Charlotte, why don't you go first? Yeah, I think we find Poppy and Ian in this uh, new position of being equals in season two, which uh, it's a big change from season one where Ian is clearly Poppy's boss, no matter how much she thinks he's incompetent, he has the last say. And now in season two, they both have the last say, which means that no one has the last say, which means that their arguments could just go on forever and ever and ever, which was a lot of fun to play with. Uh, but I also enjoyed that, you know, you you do as towards the end of season one, get to see that they have this really beautiful friendship apart from their rivalry. And so we lean into that as well this season. It's just fun to play something different. Um, and and because the, the, the dynamic has changed, the external dynamic has changed between the two of them. Um, and the practical dynamic has changed, then then certainly the emotional dynamic is is going to change. And so that was just a lot of fun to play with Charlotte. Um, Charlotte, in the first episode, Poppy's having some, I don't know how to put this, inappropriate dreams about iron. Um, <laughs> who came up with those hand signals that she does? Was that you? <laughs> Um, I definitely came, uh, I came into that scene with some ideas of what I wanted to do. And then I feel like we shot, I mean, there must be footage of me just for like 10 minutes doing different, like, and Megan Gans, our co-creator was yelling off camera, like, hit your, hit your wrists together. And David, who I do that scene with David Hornsby was being like, do something with your fingers. And, uh, it was, it was very fun to shoot. I laughed a lot. I ruined a lot of the takes. Rob, how did you get Anthony Hopkins to narrate the new special? Um, we uh, we called him <laughs> uh, Craig Mazin, who is a uh, a writer on the show. Um, he, I was talking to him, and I said, hey, "I think we need somebody with um, some some heft," because originally my character was um, narrating the 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 piece, and. I just heard it and I'm so sick of my own voice and it worked narratively, but it just felt like we wanted to have somebody um, that right off the bat could could make it feel magical. And so um, there's like maybe four people on the planet that have a voice like that and they're all knighted. So we realized we had to go to the UK to find to find a knight. Um, Jane, uh, D Dame Judy Dench was 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 thrown about. Um, and and then Craig said, what about? Anthony Hopkins, I said, yes, Anthony Hopkins, 100%, but we, we we need this recorded tomorrow. And he said, oh, I know his lawyer. So we called his lawyer. I mean, within 10 minutes, I was talking to Anthony Hopkins and he said, yes. Hopkins is uh, a famous Welshman. Uh, did he have anything to say about you buying a Wrexham football club? Yes, he is a big supporter. He is a 100, no, he didn't mention anything, but <laughs> I'm going to make him a supporter. I've already sent him a bunch of gear and I'm gonna hope that he, uh, puts it on and, and puts it up on his Instagram. We'll see. We're buds now, so I'm sure I can reach out. I think there might be a bit of rivalry there because he's from South Wales, Port Talbot, isn't he? And Wrexham's obviously far north. He might he might have to kind of come back to you and tell you that he can never work with you again now. I think that's a fair assessment, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, I call him Tony now. So uh, he said, hey, call me Tony. So I say, okay, Tony, because I said, Sir Anthony. He says, don't, don't worry about that. I said, okay, Mr. Hopkins, don't worry about that. Call me Tony. I said, okay, Tony. So now I assume that since I can call him Tony, we're buds. He'll go for whatever lives in the area. team you own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll, 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 he'll go for it. Um, I've got a bit of a fun question around this for both of you now. Um, in the UK, when a player joins a new team, they often have to perform some kind of initiation task. Sometimes it's to sing a song to like their new teammates, uh, do like a, a weird talent that they've got. Um, what would each of you do if you were in that situation? Charlotte, why don't you go first? I, oh no! Uh, so you—they have to perform a weird talent as an initiation. 
is that so lots of them just sing a song but i mean this okay is... look at this this is what i would do <laughs> with that <laughs> i'm not even sure what that is but i mean i think it'd go down well. <laughs> what about you rob what did you, what did you do? i gotta follow that <laughs> yeah um mold your cheeks would... rob it's the only way to get on the team i would dunk a basketball a lot of people think that I can't dunk because I'm 44 and and five foot nine, but I can I can actually dunk a basketball. I mean, I can't dunk a basketball. I'm just to be clear. It, well, uh, it depends on the size of the net, the height of the net. If you drop that thing down to seven, six and a half feet, I could I will dunk. I think I, mean, I think Charlotte might win that just because I don't really know what to make of it. But I mean, it's great. Um, I knew I knew that that was going to come in handy one day. <laughs> Are there any other cameos in season two that fans can look forward to? Um, yes, we have uh, we have uh, the one Mr. Snoop Dogg is going to be uh, is going to be making an appearance. Um, we also have uh, Academy Award winning actor William Hurt, who's going to be making an appearance later in the season. So um, we're we're sort We've of span some cool guest stars. <laughs> yeah, we're really we're really we're really spanning the the spectrum of guest stars this year. What was it like working with Snoop? That's a great get. I I don't remember. I was so high for. <laughs> a good part of that day like definitely the second half of the day <laughs> i was floating joking. around mars happily <laughs> no no it was incredible it was so fun so fun apart from cameos um there was a special uh standalone episode last season um i just wondered whether you guys were planning on doing any more of that kind of thing we are we have and we did <laughs> is it it gives like the normal cast kind of like a, a day off almost doesn't it do, do they love when they hear that oh we're doing a standalone oh great i'm gonna go to the pub now. i mean i love coming into work so i i feel like there's definitely an element of like oh you don't need me today should i just come in and like hang out uh but also it is really exciting when the season comes out to get to watch this one episode that you're not part of and you get to see the show from a whole different perspective and last season that standalone episode was so good and this season it's so good uh i'm excited to see what people think uh i just watched the first episode of season two um at lunch today um and something that i saw in it that really intrigued me was um carol mentions that there's some workplace discrimination seminars that none of the staff attend obviously but um surely there's got to be an episode in that that would be brilliant yeah, I mean, I like the idea that um, that people hold very strong opinions on certain subjects and then just don't educate themselves at all on those particular <laughs> subjects. And that's sort of a running theme throughout the show. I have to ask before we wrap up, Rob, where's Always Sunny at right now? Can you give us an uh, we, are, we are going to start writing in three weeks, season 15. Thanks so much for talking to me today, guys, and have a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Alex.